Hey guys, so today we're going to be looking at the Fire and Blood system updates, or uh, system changes as I like to call them. So basically, what's happening is, the main thing is they're actually making changes to hard mode. So this is a big deal because, for a long time, everyone's been complaining that hard mode really doesn't offer anything good. Uh, almost no no one in the whole game plays hard mode, like everyone just does hard mode because the rewards for hard mode are so bad. Um, and I even made a video discussing that the rewards are not up to par with the difficulty uh, that hard mode brings. So now they're actually addressing this and making some changes. So I really do like that. Uh, I think it's a good idea to listen to your player base. A very good idea. And uh, I like that they're doing this. So what they're doing, uh, first thing they're doing is they're adding the Raven King Soul Shields to Naru Santum, Iron Tech Forge, Everdrate Layer, Starstone Mines, and Hollow's Heart. So all these dungeons in hard mode will drop Raven King Soul Shields. So uh, this is cool for people, you know, maybe who don't have enough Raven Feathers. Again, this is not a big change because I would say most people already have their uh, Raven Soul Shields, but I mean, it's a change nonetheless, so I won't really complain about that. Now, this is the big change. This is something very interesting. So there you have two things called the Rough Wind uh, Ring <coughs> and then the Rough Wind Earring. So the Rough Wind Ring is from the hard mode difficulty of Starstone Mines and Hollow's Heart. The Rough Wind Earring is from Iron Tech Forge and Epidrate Layer. Basically, what happens is there's a new vendor. Uh, right outside where DKV is, the weekly raid, uh, this vendor has elemental prisms. So basically what happens is, when you have 600 healing cores and 30 blatstones, you can buy the elemental of your choice. So let's say you um, let's say you farm Iron Tech Forge hard mode and you get the Rough Wing Earring drop. Now just note, these are tradables, so that's another big thing. So you get the Rough Wing Earring drop, and then you go to the vendor in DKV, outside DKV, and then you would buy his elemental prism, uh, the fire version. And then with that, you'd be able to buy the BT Fire Earring Stage 1. So that's a really big change because what's happening is now you have a for sure way to option BT accessories. So honestly, this is good because I know a lot of people who've been farming uh, uh, Black Tower, the raid, for like over like six to eight months and still haven't got their fire accessories, or at least all of them. Just honestly, fire accessories, at least for me too, they just do not drop. I never see them. Uh, so this is actually a really nice change because at least, I know 600 healing cores is a lot, no, obviously it's not going to be easy, but I do like that there's a for sure way to get the BT accessory, so you're not stuck waiting every freaking week praying that you get the fire uh, earring drop, you know, or the fire ring drop, whatever. So I actually really do like this change, and uh, honestly, I, would, I probably will see some people running hard mode just because of this, uh, you know, so that's pretty interesting, and I do like that they're uh, making new ways to do that, that's pretty cool. Uh, also, for hard mode for Evadrate Citadel, Desolate Tomb, and Iron Foundry, all those rewards right now are going to be changed to normal mode. So, let's say, like, all the outfits from Desolate Tomb and stuff, you can now get them in normal mode, so that's going to be kind of cool. Uh, another thing they're doing is still skill and stat change. So, they're removing training certificates, uh, whirlwind tokens, and pugless tokens, and now they're just be bravery uh, coins. Now, this is another big one. The overall cost of Hall Moon skills have been reduced by approximately 50%. That's a big deal because a lot of people have been complaining about uh, Hall Moon skills being way too expensive. I'm one of those people. I feel like they're way overpriced. And there's a lot of people that still don't have their Hall Moon skills unlocked. Um, so they're reducing those by 50%, which is a really big uh, reduction. So I really like this reduction. And uh, I feel like this is a great direction. So another thing they're doing is adding the skill balance update. This was in Korea in December. So basically what happens with this is <coughs> they're adding new things. So right now you have your Hall Moon points and you can put into attack and defense. What they're adding is new options. So you can add threat, health regen, movement speed, Hall Moon focus, and debuff defense. Uh, so basically that's kind of cool. There's new options to uh, change your playstyle. Now the big thing is they're doing that I feel like most people will just stay with attack and defense. But I feel like in certain cases, let's say for a Blade Master or a Kung Fu Master, if they want to like tank more and have more threat, they might put points in there. Uh, if they want more health regen, they might do that. Or let's say for like Lightning Blade Masters, they have uh, issues with their focus management. Uh, they actually need some buffs in Korea for that. Uh, but they're not in North America or Europe yet, so they might put some points in Han Moon uh, focus. So there's different options. I really do like that. Um, but I feel like most classes will just stay with attack and defense. But the cool that they're adding that, you know, just to change your playstyles a little bit. Now, another thing I've really been looking forward to is you can now disable skills from your uh, martial tomb or tome, whatever you want to call it. But basically what that means is, let's say, for example, I'm a blade dancer. So I really hate accidentally knocking up stuff. 
And so what I could do is I could just get, disable the lock uh, knockup ability. And what that means is now I can't ever use it. So it'll be a nice way to get rid of skills that you accidentally use and uh, enable the skills that you want to use. So that's a really cool option. And uh, personally, I've been waiting that for a while. So that's really cool that they're adding that. Basically, what they're doing is they're adding Dragon Bloods and Golden Dragon Bloods. Bloods. So basically, if you look at this, all these dungeons like Everdrake Citadel, Desolate Tomb, Nard Foundry, Hall's Heart, Drowning Deeps, all these in normal mode, you're going to be able to use Dragon Bloods. So to me, that's kind of crazy because honestly, that just makes it so much easier. Like now you can die once and just come back to life. Like that's pretty crazy for like dungeons like Hall's Heart and Drowning Deeps because... I feel this is gonna make it way more face roll. Um, honestly, I don't know if I'm really a fan of it. Like, I know it'll be way easier, but that's pretty crazy to me. Also, they're adding Golden Dragon Bloods to the hard mode, so you'll even have that for a hard mode, uh, which makes it even easier for that too. So this is pretty crazy to me. I really didn't think they're gonna be doing these for like the high end dungeons, but they are. Uh, so it's gonna make like Hall's Heart and all them way way easier. Uh, and honestly, people will just be face rolling that. I know they already do it somewhat, but uh, for normal mode, you usually have to have some mechanics in Hollow's Heart, so that's pretty crazy that I'd even Dragon Bloods, but I guess they just want to make it easier for people. Um, but, you know, whatever. Last but not least, uh, items. This is another big thing. So they're actually reducing the cost of Legendary Elements and Legendary Jewels. So right now, they're going for 30 Soulstone Crystals, 15 Sacred Crystals, and 10 Gold. After the reduction, it'll be 15 Soulstone Crystals, 7 Sacred Crystals, and 10 Gold. So basically, they're reducing it by uh, 15 um, soulstone crystals and by about, you know, 8 sacred crystals. So not a lot, honestly. <laughs> you know, it's not really a big deal. But I guess some reduction is good. Honestly, I just feel like they should remove the soulstone crystals and the sacred crystals and just make it flat out for 10 gold. Like, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, but honestly, I know why they do it. It's just because uh, people are going to spend more money in the daily deals and on Trove when it comes out because... It's so hard to get legendary elements and legendary jewels, and you need so many. Uh, but honestly, I just feel like they should just get rid of that and just make it for 10 gold. That'd be fair. But again, I, I mean, at least they're doing some reductions. I'll take it, but that's just my thoughts. Now, this is another, last but not least, this is a really big one. I'm really happy about this one. Uh, basically, unpacked items, they now stack together if they're a similar item. So basically, those annoying ass Han Moon XP charms, the 10,000 ones, now they all stack together. So you don't have to click through each one. That's like the worst thing in the whole game, and now you don't have to do that. So I'm really happy about that, honestly. It's just a little change. But honestly, the quality of light changes really make the game way better. Uh, but that's really all the system changes. There's actually a lot. Uh, I really want to know what you guys think. What do you think are uh, the biggest changes? What are you most excited about? And uh, let me know what you guys think.